to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Wash dish, bitch. <laughs> What's this fun little flirty sign you, you have on your it? desk? Can you even see it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? It reads well. Look, if you subscribe on YouTube, obviously, we've got uh, a wanna... video show. Thousands of subscribers now. We really appreciate it, by the way. Um, this is, I want to say basic white girl. Uh, this is... Um, <laughs> Very basic white girls, probably hot, what I'd say. It's hot girl summer, okay? I'm going to do whatever I want to do, <laughs> okay? And you better wash dish, bitch, because I'm about to do it. What, what is hot girl summer? So I've been seeing this <laughs> pop up all over people's stories. Barstool Sports had it. What does hot girl summer mean? So, okay. It's hard to explain. It's, it's a state of mind. Okay, it's the slang for the summer. Sure. Hot girl summer. Yep. It means to just be yourself, do what you want to do, okay. live your truth, Yep. be hot, Yep. get that money, Okay. unapologetically being you. And it's not just, it's genderless as well. It's called hot girl summer, but it's for guys as well. So, and so your hot girl summer could be on a boat, <laughs> okay? flaunting your shit in a bikini or it could be making a fucking cobbler okay you know what i mean whatever your truth is and whatever's making you happy right right hot girl summer hot girl summer man that sounds awful so the what's her what's her name All megan this... the stallion have you heard of her yes i have heard of her okay the rapper so she, yeah so she started this oh she's the one that started this yeah gotcha 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 so for those of you out there who don't know Megan the Stallion, and, and it's T H E E, so you have to say it longer. Correct. I'm surprised you know about her. Like, I'm actually genuinely shocked that you know about her. Why? You don't seem too hip on the rap, like on the rap tip, like for because she's really new. I'm not even sure she has a full album out yet. Uh, Fever just came out. Just dropped. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I've heard her features before and all that other shit. Uh, it was either Complex or XXL. Just named her one of the top ten freshmen of the year. Yeah, and, uh, and she was discovered on Instagram, right? Yes, yeah. she was. And look, they what they did for this uh, shoot was give everybody the same beat. So all ten rappers got the same beat, mm -hmm. and then they had to freestyle over the beat, and then they posted it. I believe it was Complex. Um, I want to say it was. Yesterday, the day before, and um, she fucking slayed. Like, it was, she, she destroyed. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. I had no idea that she created Hot Girl Summer, though. That's the last person I would expect to create Hot Girl Summer. Why? It sounds like a really white girl. Like, I, I picture. No, it's just us. Or us um, I picture, like, white Jenna girls Bush. thinking that. Uh, we are on that we're cool on black twitter but we aren't you know what i mean where it's like we're just taking we're taking a uh, black twitter stuff and yep. making and ruining it yeah so it's another case of white people ruining everything you bet it is you bet it is hot girl summer which so is why she, i put she it created on my that cobbler. and then white girls have just taken over it yeah i think miley cyrus posted so she was like dancing in front of a mirror hashtag all she wrote was hashtag hot girl summer and it, she has like two million followers yeah so. so it was it was xxl not complex by the way for the magazine um yeah so her verse was rad and then da baby um who's been like that guy's album's been all over the charts for like the last two months so like him i understand uh, right. popping off this shit but they were saying out of the top 10 yesterday that's these were the two best, like, hey, we really need to watch out for them. I did not picture you listening to Megan the Stallion. I didn't. Okay. 
You're just taking her phrase and making it I actually it whiter. looked up on Google, <laughs> what does hot girl summer mean? Yeah. And that's Which what... is the whitest thing you can do, I think. I think so. I um, definitely think so. But, you know, hot girl summer, doing whatever you want. Yeah. Not going to museums. Not eating sushi. Yeah. Uh, you know, wearing a one piece. Okay. So. Making cobbler. Eating cobbler. Now that I okay? have context on this. Sure. Right, your Instagram stories <laughs> last night at some point I was working involved. And this is for the audience who doesn't follow at Jesse Wiseman on Instagram. This is the hard hitting stuff that you're going to get, guys. So she listen posts up. once a month. So if you want to follow yep. her, you're going to get amazing footage like this yes the first one was just riveting it appeared to be the first story you had because it wasn't an actual post it appeared to be just you making eggs and then s boiling eggs and then steam rising off the eggs is that correct they were peaches thanks for watching they were peaches it was They're super peaches. blurry and hard to see yeah but that's why i did it <laughs> hot girl summer because i went up on the on the pan yep. and the steam came up yeah. hot girl summer it was both hot and I was doing whatever I wanted and I was living my truth and getting that paper. Yep. So I was, I was hot girl summer right then. Great. And so the steam made it hot. Yep. So both, both physically and it's a mental state at that yep. point. It's physical and mental. Genderless as well. Like I said, guys can be having a hot girl summer. So I expect you to... Be saying it and hashtagging it every time you do something that you want to do. Yeah. That you truly want and you don't care about what anybody else thinks. I'll, I'll definitely do it. I want you to say. For the comedy element of it. Hot girl summer. I will. I will. Um, so let's, let's, let's deep dive into the second story that you had. Because there was three last night. Mm -hmm. um, all of them equally riveting. Riveting. And again, that's the kind of stuff you're going to be getting from me <laughs> when you... Go on my Instagram. Yep. No kids, though, so you should be happy about that. Yeah. I won't post about my kids because it's not their Instagram. It's mine. Yeah. If they, wanna put, if they want pictures of themselves on the internet, they're going to have to get their own no, I got it. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to fill our 11-month-old um, in on that when we get home on, on the rules of that. You know, let him know. Yeah, because people are like, why don't you post about your kids? He's got a gram up. No, nah, he's 11 months Instagram. old. Instagram. He's got a gram up. My Instagram. You got a gram up. What was the second story? So the second story I think was, was it the cobbler going in the oven? Yeah. Yep. Cool. So peaches, <laughs> so the peaches were first. Yeah. Again, contain yourself. The peaches, peeling of the peaches first, if you know, you know. You know what I mean? Like if you know about blanching and peeling peaches, you would have gotten that post. Sure. And all the messages were, give us more, please don't stop, Right. I love this, what's the recipe, what are you making, people love this. I haven't heard the word blanch since the Golden Girls, mm -hmm. so whatever you did to, would you age up the peaches, is that what blanching is? No, blanching is super hot water mm -hmm. for like 40 seconds. Yeah. And then into an ice bath. Ah, that's what old people do. Yeah, so, so you blanched it. Blanched. You blanched the shit out of it. And then you can peel it. Same, easy. same as old people. Um, peel it easy. And then the last, the last was obviously your finished, finished product, slow motion pan. Over and you the hashtagged top. it, Hot Girl Summer. Yeah. 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 Um, how because did you that's exactly what I wanted to do, and I did what I wanted to do, and yeah. that's Hot Girl Summer. Yeah. So, so after all of that, because I know the end result now, but the audience doesn't, mm. there was a birthday party in the neighborhood for someone, yep. uh, a friend of ours. Yep. Did you know that you were having a cobbler competition or I was this not. independent? You both had just brought over cobblers just without bought, consulting with each other. Yep. Okay. So when we both found out that we both made cobblers, blam, cobbler off, chopped. I'm, I'm immediately on top chef yep. in my mind. Yeah, you're in it. Oh my gosh, this is the competition. And they were kind of like, no, no, we'll just, it's not really a competition. I'm like, you get it, you know, and yeah. I've like got out the sheets for voting. And everyone's like, no, no, we're just have two cobblers now. Like, it's fine. It's not a big deal. And I'm like, in everybody's face, making sure they know it's a competition. Hot Girl Summer. 
hot girl summer and they're like what and i'm like you know what i'm saying bish yeah um and i think i lost Tell, well, explain Which, to the audience why you think you lost because look when everybody brings a dish to a party you look at how much is left yes and so yours hers had more was than, all gone than, than one of your best friends yeah right so uh, ashley the levesque yeah we're the adversary okay I go against her anytime now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I have, we've got a, you know, now we got a game. Sure, now sure. Now we got a game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> um, you take your cooking is, very seriously. I do, and the competition part of it. So in my house, at my dad's, mm -hmm. anytime we have barbecue or family dinner, Thanksgiving, there's always one dish that we make a competition <laughs> between me and my dad, who's a really good cook, and then my actual professional chef brother. Yeah. So we'll do green bean off, right? Yeah. Or tart off. And for, for those at home, there is nothing, and I'm, stop me if I'm speaking out of school here. Um, there's nothing that you love in this world more than cooking Thanksgiving dinner with your father. Right. Right. Um, you told me this before going into this right we had your father out for thanksgiving this year mm -hmm. i would say around noon of thanksgiving day yep you told your father and i quote get your fucking shit together <laughs> this is all falling apart yeah. um i walked away for one second out yeah. of the fucking kitchen yeah. and he is cutting bacon and willy-nilly throwing it into a pan without measuring without knowing what the fuck he's doing sure and he lost focus and do you remember in the kitchen i had the post-it notes everywhere on every cabinet that said stay focused stay in the game yeah this and is real he, by the way swear to god this is real this is not for the show it's real. i don't think anyone deny would there ever was think post-it notes on every single cabinet that said stay focused Stay in the and game. his prep work for the day. Correct. Because he was my sous chef. And that, I didn't want it to be that way, but he showed himself. You know, he showed his true colors. He showed he his ass that day. He was not able to, yeah. yeah, to move into executive chef position, unfortunately. And I was hoping that he would. But he so was, he uh, leaves. He leaves after Thanksgiving. Right. Uh, we get a, a Christmas, obviously, is right around the bend. Mm -hmm. Right around the corn dog. And... Uh, he sent you a box of, were they Ginsu knives for Christmas? They were, yeah. So do you think that was a subtle dig toward the way you were treating him? Or, hey, keep these on tap for when I get back here. I need better equipment. Yeah, and I think that's what it was, and I think that he was valid in that. Okay. So he was right that I don't always have the right tools. Uh, all right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. For my, to equal my attitude. Well, look. But <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I talk like I have a professional kitchen and then I have like this, you know what I mean? Rickety. It's all fruit knives. Yeah. Yeah. It's all Tiny, pear tiny knives. little pear knives. Yeah. So he's right. Yeah, he is. He was right. And I did. I overreacted, you know, and um, I went full like Hell's Kitchen on him. But it's just when you get in the thick of it. Yeah, the And stink. the heat and the weeds. Yeah. You know, and your mise en place is not right. It's not set up. It's not organized. Mm -hmm. You will crumble. And that is what happened. Well, Jesse. And the corn suffered because of it. Uh, yeah, the, the corn did suffer. The corn did suffer. Um, I, will, it, I will say this. It was humbling. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you felt humbled last night. To sure. see yourself lose. Because it's been a while. It has been a while since I lost. I mean, I've lost cookie competitions, but it's just because I couldn't win every time. You know, they wouldn't let me. Yeah. But they wanted me to. And, and I clearly did. And I can vouch for that. that like, that's that actually true. That is real. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've got a target on my back. So it's like, I, what do I say? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But, I, I mean, this isn't a dig. Sorry, Ashley. But, you know, in this instance, the box ingredients one out over all fresh made from scratch sometimes and I it guess tastes it's better just your taste yeah it's just sometimes your yeah taste. absolutely I've, yeah. I've had fresh food that and we, we you know because i'll, I'll we kind of divvy up our restaurant picks between you and i when we, when we have dates right mm -hmm. 
there's some farm to table shit where literally I would say 80% of the time, I think that's a hard, hard number. So I'm saying literally Mm -hmm. 80% of the time I'm like, meh, doesn't taste like anything. It tastes like shit. Just tastes right. like fucking grass. And that's our palate. Unseasoned. That's the difference between an unsophisticated palate um, and someone that, you know, is a seasoned um, ingredients, fresh ingredients lover yeah. like myself and every other professional chef out there. So, well, and that's the difference, you know, between you and me. And that's fine. So. Everyone there, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about their unsophisticated palate, but I, you know, I used local fresh peaches, fresh blueberries. Mm. Nothing was from a box. Everything was homemade down to the cinnamon whipped cream. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to leave it out there. Yeah, and you lost. I'm just going to leave that um, on and the that, table that's gonna and happen. I lost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You took an L and it's humbling. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, you got humbled. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. it was nice to see that side of you. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's rare that you lose and you did. And yeah. uh, it was nice. It's it's nice to see. It's refreshing mm-hmm. to see you take it, take a loss like this. And again, so wonderfully not blaming or judging anything. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, I think we all learned a valuable lesson. Um, also want to just uh, kick this back to the, the statement you said before about my unsophisticated palate. Yep. Um, I believe I was the one who showed you the documentary Jiro. Uh, dreams of sushi so for those of you that <laughs> don't know this story this is the best <laughs> prank no we talked about it on the show we and, have but uh, there may be new listeners so real quick it's the best <laughs> prank that ross has ever played on me we were in we just moved here we had an empty apartment air mattress we were watching you know a documentary on a laptop yeah, because um, we were we were buying on a like house. a crate next we were to buying the a house, mattress. So we, we, yeah. we rented this uh, place so, out while we were looking at house hunting. Yeah. So let me finish Hot Girl Summer. So we <laughs> were laying on the air mattress, blow up mattress. Yep. So tired, tired as hell. I think we had like drove that day or something. Just got there, and we're just turning on something. We turned on Hero Dreams of Sushi documentary. Jiro, Jiro. I think it is, yeah. Dreams of Sushi, yeah. Sushi documentary on Netflix. Um, don't check it out <laughs> unless you want to get context for this prank. So I'm like so tired and I'm watching it and you are about to turn over and go to sleep and you say, dude, the end of this documentary is supposed to be fucking nuts. Yeah, there's a crazy twist. There's a twist. crazy <laughs> twist at the end. You turn over, yep. go to sleep. I finish. <laughs> One of the most boring documentaries I've ever seen in my life. And it ends with the old guy just continuing to do all the same things he was doing the entire documentary. And you were asleep, so you didn't get... It's one of those pranks where you don't get the satisfaction of your... You know, you don't get to see the fruits of your labor. And those are the creepiest pranks to me. I didn't think you'd get through it. Because you're just thinking... I didn't think you'd get through it. Um, but it was and amazing. I was just like, what the fuck? And I <sighs> stayed up through this whole thing. So good. I was laughing, but <laughs> it was one of those laughs where it's like, you fucking motherfucker. Why is that so good? But uh, it was. It's great. It's so now great. you need to check out that documentary just so you understand what it was like for me at the end. Uh, it's so good. Waiting for this twist. Credits are going. I'm still waiting. There has to be nope. another little like thing at the end no. or no, this, yeah, the sea urgent wasn't going to come back to life and suck, suck his face off or anything. Nope. Nope. Uh, but you know what else is good? Our sponsors, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bro. Blammo, 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 blammo. What your granny likes, what your granny likes. I know what your granny likes. Yeah. She likes a, a nice mattress. Set of pillows. She likes it firm. Yep. But not too firm. Yep. And, and uh, soft, but not too soft. And that's exactly what you get at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And if you're military or first responder, you get 15% off forever. Scroll down to the bottom of the page. Mm-hmm. Do your shit. Do your shit. Do um, it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Get a mattress. Get it. Look, all the deals are still going on. I, 
I think I think they took a, a down the Fourth of July deals, but the the deals they have are amazing. Two hundred dollars off a mattress, free pillows with a mattress, adjustable base. That adjustable base, by the way, everybody's asking me, is it like a Craftmatic? Yes, it is. Yeah. USB ports, flashlights, fully electric, fucking awesome, dude. Um, and it's it fits almost every size. So, uh, it's the bomb. It's the business. And you can go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get it. As always, they have a 20, 36 months. No, it's tw- wow, 36 calm months. Calm down. I was going to say 24. Yeah. I was going to say two years. It's three years. No interest pay as you go program. No money down. Go fuck yourself. Get a mattress today at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Boom, 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 boom. Shabloinkers. Hot girl summer. Everybody's drinking Stradka's at the hot girl summer. Strike force and vodka. What flavor are you putting in yours? I'm going to do great. Oh, I'm going to do orange. And then I'll probably put a little lemon in there. Make it multi fruit. I'll make a little sangria vodka drink and put all the flavors in there. I'll make it suicide. I'll what see what the roller are you doing? What are you doing today for hot girl sh- for your hot girl for summer? hot girl summer? Yeah. I'm probably gonna cut my jeans off uh, right around the the brethren area, mm-hmm. right around the brethren so just area. Just the hole in that part. No, I'm gonna cut uh, them right below it. Oh, um, oh into and I'm shorts. gonna I'm gonna do a a nut under. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so where I cut the bottom of it off. Uh, it's almost like a dress, but, so you can just see my nuts hanging. I'm gonna mm-hmm. tuck my dong up uh, underneath the, the belt part Classic. and uh, just nice. let the nuts hang, kind of nice. like the underboob, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool, it's gonna be an cool, under nut cool. summer, uh, hot girl summer. Here's my under nuts. Shave those up and uh, get back to work. Work it, girl. Work it, girl. Hot girl summer. Work it, girl. Move that body. Work. It always makes um, me so uncomfortable. Makes me uncomfortable when you saying sing it. Sing RuPaul. Makes me makes me God. uncomfortable saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you, but you do that privately to me. Have you ever done it on the show? Probably not. Uh, you will yell that to me constantly <laughs> for just, everything. It's almost like a hot girl summer thing. I'll come up when you're Work. in the kitchen. Yeah, and just and just poke <laughs> my you, poke my beak in right behind your ear and go work. Work it, girl. Do your thing. All the dance floor work. <laughs> uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com and work uh, for that that summer body, you for your revealed summer hot yourself. girl body. What? You revealed yourself kind of when Carson Daly got called his like nickname by his wife on the Today Show. Not at all. I, I'm, I'm proud of, of screaming of you work in your ears. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think and like how you sing it. And stuff. It's always Has amused you... me. Yeah, it's always amused me that that was a whole thing for a summer, <laughs> and like people got into it. It still yeah. amuses me that RuPaul is a thing. Um, Anywho, like, because everybody still watches that fucking runway show. It's bigger than ever. The drag race. Yeah, yeah. He won a fucking Golden Globe for mm-hmm. it. Like, people love it. It's been going on for what thirty years at this point. It feels like. Anyways, let me get to the end of this. Strikeforceenergy dot com. Promo code REVOLUTION, Work. 20% off. Work. Uh, they send it everywhere in the entire world. Work it, girl. Uh, Dude, last but not fine. least, yeah, if you're shaving up like Ruve Paul, go to straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you rock it. Work. <laughs> Straightrazors.com has got everything you need to be a real man or a lady in this life. Shave up for hot girl summer. Um, shave that bush. Uh, man or woman. You I'm, not, I'm not keeping it just to pregnant people anymore because it's hot girl summer for everyone. Genderless. Genderless. Shave up. Be a Ken. Be a Barbie down there. Go real smooth. Go skin to skin, you know? Beard to beard. Yeah. Bush to bush. Or bush to non-bush. That, Bush to beer. Yeah. Beard to... To, yeah, you bet. George to George Sr. Mm. W to Sr. Mm. Bush to Bush. Uh, straightrazors.com has got everything you need to be a real man in this life. Shampoos, beard oils, conditioners, mustache waxes. Their straight razors are second to none. And they all work. Uh, straightrazors.com. Always has the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. And that's a big, big savings. Um, and then lastly, I, I, I really want to talk about thank you for my service. 
the new book is coming out in, holy shit, man. Is that real? 24 days? Fuck. That is, it, it is finally getting real now. After three years, that is finally getting real. Um, I, I'm going to... I'm going to reveal something to the audience that probably nobody knows. Um, we're not only close to the New York Times bestseller list, but we're, we're goddamn close to number one. Uh, I would say, because Matt's got a bunch of, it's, a, it's, a, it's the book I wrote with, with my beef fry, Matt Best, about his life. Um, he's going on a bunch of massive shows. You're going to see him on pretty much every television show you've ever watched in your life. Starting in about meh, a week. Every television show you've ever watched in your life. For for our audience, yes, I would say yes. Okay. Uh, I don't want to give it away, simply for the fact of this has happened before, where one of our friends uh, was supposed to go on TV for this huge presentation and thing, and uh, there was a terrorist attack. Mm. It was a school shooting uh, for another friend of mine, and they got bumped. Problem is when you get bumps, like if you're promoting something or whatever, like usually those slots are filled for the next few days. And if you're trying to get something out in time, you might not get to go back. Therefore, I don't want to say what's going on in the world that day because if, if, if something massive happens on, on shows like these, it'll happen and you get bumped. But if everything stays all right and true to form in this world, uh, you, will see, you will see him on all of your favorite things. Um, all your shows that everybody watches from this audience, at least. Got it. Um, if you're a liberal, get fucked. <laughs> you know, you're not gonna see him on Rachel Maddow. <laughs> Am I right? Um, but you'll see him everywhere, and you'll. I, I I can already envision the messages of like, holy shit, I was unaware of how big this is. Yes, it is getting there. So if you could support and uh, and buy a hardback in particular. It's only, I don't I think it's like 18 bucks on Amazon. Um, the hardback numbers are the ones that are pushing us up the charts for the New York Times bestseller list. And uh, we are getting extremely, extremely close. Uh, and we are 24 days out. So please buy a copy of Thank You for Your Service. Now, I want to get into uh, a debate that was going on last night on the internet that I, it had me shook. It had me shook, Jabes, that this was even a fucking debate. And I don't know where this started, and they're trying to find the root of it today, because everybody's like, yo, how the fuck did this get started? The debate was this. Donald Glover is better than Jamie Foxx. And this was trending on Twitter pretty much all night and everything, and I was like, so people started flooding Twitter with video clips of Jamie Foxx, and his greatness to me personally. Like, I, look, Donald Glover is pretty fucking rad. Um, mm -hmm. Seems like a weird guy. I, I, don't, I don't actually know him. Like, no. I'm surprised because I've, I've never met him. But uh, uh, I don't know him. But by all accounts, like, even when he missed the Grammys and shit, and he won, was it Best Song of the Year, which, mm -hmm. is, which was a first for any hip-hop artist in the history of the Grammys, he didn't even show up for that. But he had that lawsuit against it. No, there, there was no lawsuit. Oh. So nobody's ever filed. Yeah. So to speak, but, you know, if, if you didn't do anything wrong, show up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying you did or didn't because I don't know, and there's still no lawsuit to this day, so who knows the, the real truth behind that. Donald Glover's been putting out some awesome shit. Atlanta is arguably one of my favorite shows on the planet mm -hmm. right now comedically. Um, fuck, I don't, there's some episodes I don't even know how you would describe it. That yeah. They're so interesting. That Teddy Pendergrass show is one of the best half hours of television that I've ever seen. Um, the Guava Island thing was super ambitious, and I thought it was pretty fucking cool for Amazon. It was weird, it was arty, but it was rad. Clunky a little bit, but yeah. But from the guy who did Community mm -hmm. to do that, like... Mm -hmm. It was pretty goddamn cool yep. um, that you could still do things like that and get away with it. He's a great singer. He right. crushed at Coachella this year. We yep. saw that performance. He was rad. However, he is no fucking Jamie Foxx. And I want to put a goddamn stamp on that. And why did this start? They, they, they can't figure it out because did some, they have somebody... some kind of beat? No, they don't. Okay. At all. Um, and... Uh, 
the the common theme seemed to be this morning because I was trying to dig into this before we were doing the show was that both of them came from comedy backgrounds and went on to do dramatic shit. They they sing as well. They've won Grammys. They've won. Okay. You know, there is a similar path. They sort came of. from comedy. Went to correct. Dramatic. Um, <clears throat> man, I look the clips. Pull up any clip of Jamie Fox on the internet doing anything. That guy's on another fucking planet. Here's the difference, the biggest difference to me. Uh, Jamie Foxx is a born and bred entertainer. Any place, anytime, anywhere, the motherfucker will get up on stage, entertain anyone. He is just as charming and friendly in person as oh, yeah. you could possibly imagine. Whereas, by all accounts, everybody's like Donald Glover. I mean, even his director for that song, or the producer of that song, when he didn't show up for the Grammy, was like, Man, I haven't talked to him in like three or four days. He's like, he's a weird guy. I don't know where he's at. Um, And that might be part of his whole shit. Right. But Jamie Foxx also has an Oscar. That's true. So I'm not, who's to say that Donald Glover won't have one day because he won't have one one day because he might. If he Mm -hmm. keeps on this path, he very well might. But um, in person, if you're giving me somebody pound for pound who's, who's better all the way around, like, it's Jamie Foxx, man. I guess that's why I'm wondering why this is even a discussion. I think because of the age, and that was something else that was brought up, of this generation forgetting the new generation, right, of millennials who are now oh. coming up with, with Donald Glover. They don't know Jamie Foxx. Like, Lemmy Color was fucking 20 years ago. Yeah. 20 years ago. So they weren't, you know, some, of them, some people weren't even born. Yeah. It was just like, yo, throw on a Shanene clip and... Tell me about Jamie Foxx. Throw on some in-, in Living Color shit and tell yeah. me about Jamie Foxx. The Does weirdest... it hold up? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, my God, dude. It is. Because it was on. They still show reruns of it. Yeah. And I caught it the other day. Like, I caught it in passing when I was just like. <laughs> so over the top, dude. It was, but that was what. From Jim Carrey to Shanae. I mean, like. That was the, it it, it was all the best. And like. Contorted comedy. I got caught up in like a three episode thing. Uh, I mean, I watched three of them back to back. And it was just like those guys were the best. And they smashed everybody. The pro- the, not the problem. The fun part about it was when In Living Color was hot and on fire. So was SNL. Like you had Dana Carvey and all those guys. And it was just like, dude, there was so much great comedy back then where you were like. Man, you Jim Carrey, Jamie Foxx, the Wayans, even Damon, before he turned into a cocksucker. Like, major, remember Major Pain? Oh my God! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, homie, don't play that. All that shit. Sure. David David Allen Greer, man, super underrated. I know he's got a show on Fox now, but um, I've always thought he was sly funny. Kim Wayans was great. Uh, like, dude, uh, who is uh, Stephanopoulos' wife? She was on there. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, Wentworth, Alexander mm-hmm. Wentworth. She was on there. Um, I mean, fuck. And then you had that, that SNL cast of, of Sandler and Far- Farley and yeah. all those guys. And it was, you were going back and it was, it was going back and forth and all of that was going on at the same time. And it was just, it was a great time for comedy. The weird thing about Jamie Foxx was after that show, he did something on like the CW, right? It was kind of like a, a sitcom-y type of thing. Um, but he kind of fell off. Yeah. And he was one of the first celebrities I met when I went to L.A. Um, he's tried to hook up with, with my friend Laura, my neighbor, Laura. Okay. And he, he was like, he came over to our shitty apartment. Uh, we met at a bar and uh, I was trying to hook up with my friend. Nicest, coolest dude ever. The weird thing was it was pre, it was post um, a living color, but pre like fame for yeah. all this other shit. So like. He really wasn't famous and nobody gave a fuck. Like they were just like, oh, that's the guy from a living color back in the day. Right. And that's kind of what it was. And you were just like, "Eh, yeah, all right, cool, man. So nobody was starstruck by him or whatever, like they are now. Right. And uh, we ended up, you know, fuck, man, I I would see him. There was a good two or three years stretch where we were at the same places every night. It was this karaoke place. um, It was this Asian place on Sunset can't remember the name of it but they had karaoke on like mondays or tu- tuesdays um brass monkey no it was on sunset across from uh, dublin's anyways man everybody would show up there and do karaoke and it was like the best of the best i do a lot of fucking impressions and i can light up a karaoke book jamie fox though 
can just set the whole goddamn thing on fire and absolutely annihilate everyone, everyone. And he would do it every single Tuesday just to do it. And he was always the funniest guy at the party and everything else. And then he goes and wins an Oscar, goes and does a bunch of other cool shit. And then what does he do after that? He hops on an album with Kanye. Yeah. What? And then he puts out his own album that goes not only number one, but it goes, I think, double platinum. His own fucking album. And you're like, all right, cool. So Donald Glover, yeah, he's got, dude, Childish Gambino is the same way. Mm-hmm. Both of those albums were massive. Look, I, and he was the first one to turn hip hop into a, a Grammy winner, Donald Glover. So I, I guess I understand the correlation. It's just a fucking age gap. Yeah, and you, I guess you'd have to see. So body of work, he just doesn't have it yet. But we'll, I guess if you're talking about trajectory, maybe he is before at the same age as Jamie Foxx has done so much more. So yeah, maybe and is way younger, right? Yeah. So he has a whole nother half. So it's kind of a thing. of Jamie Foxx is 50 years old. Yeah. I'm going to drop that hammer. Is yeah. that crazy? Donald Glover is like 32. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jamie Foxx is 50. I mean, it's the fact that he's still relevant. We saw him on uh, LeBron James's show, uh, The Cut or whatever that barber show. Yeah. Shop show, The Shop or whatever it was. Uh-huh. Um, and he was, they were talking about going out to the clubs and all that shit. And he goes, Jamie Foxx is like, dude, I'm the old guy at the club now who's 50 years old. Who's just like, hey, there's old man Jamie Foxx. Yeah. And everybody's just like, what? You know? Yeah, like his kid is 20 or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, but let me, let me tell you, first of all, he hasn't aged. No. Second of all, that motherfucker can entertain, sing, make you laugh, do amazing impressions, and do everything all together. I'll take Jamie Foxx any day. I'll never forget at, a, um, at Cannes when they, my buddy hired Kanye for that fucking party for Wolf of Wall Street. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you know, still to this day, it was the greatest, one of the greatest concerts, performances I've ever seen. There's only 250 people there. And it was all like the most famous fucking people in the world where you're just like, dude, if a bomb went off, it would kill all of Hollywood and you'd have to start over with, with stars and shit where you're just like, this is amazing. There was a point mid show where Kanye looked out in the crowd and was just like, oh shit, is that Fox? Damn, is that Fox? Mm-hmm. He goes, hey man, you want to you wanna come up and sing? And, and Jamie Foxx is like, fuck yeah, man. Just walked through the crowd, got on stage, sang Gold Digger, sang the other song. Um, I say, oh, 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 oh. He says she wants some Marvin Gaye, some mm-hmm. Luther Vandross. You know that song too? And it was just like, like nothing had ever happened. Like he was holding a drink, handed it to somebody next to him, and was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, no, just, yeah, just give me a mic. Like we're good. And just annihilated two songs, pitch perfect. One, was in the Ray Charles voice, the Gold Digger song. Yeah. <laughs> they did the whole, you know, Wah. Yeah. And you're just like, dude, holy shit, man. I, the guy's one of the best, and he's one of my, my end-all, be-all favorites. And uh, he's on Comedians in Cars getting coffee. And uh, we're going to watch it, but they released a clip of it last night during this debate. Mm-hmm. And he did a Chappelle. So he does a, a Dave... He does impressions of everybody. Uh, he did a Dave Chappelle impression that, check it out on Netflix on Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee. It is the greatest Dave Chappelle impression I've ever oh heard. God. And it's so spot on that I don't think anyone else can ever do it again. I don't think anybody else should ever attempt to do a Dave Chappelle impression ever again. Do people do Chappelle? Not usually. There's a couple that have tried. Okay. This is so dead on that like that... Because of that debate, that clip ended up going viral right. last night. And they're just like, I- I'm taking Jamie Foxx all day. I hate to get on a fucking sure. soapbox about it. But whenever sure. there's comparisons like that, you like to weigh in. And it's, it's, it is a fun little game about how old you are and, and where you were and, and, and who's who. Because that shit happens all the time right now with LeBron and Jordan, right? Right. Who's the best of all time? It's like, there's, to me, there's no debate. It's Jordan. Right. And then I got Kobe at two, so I don't even want to... Le- 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 LeBron shit can fucking end for me at three, maybe, but sure. uh, not in my top two. But everybody else, you talked to every other kid today. LeBron, it's LeBron. Mm. I was like, no, it is not LeBron. Times, they are changing, you know, and every no, not generation that. will think that their person is better than the old guy. I, I look at the stats and, and all of that stuff, and, uh, you know, 
look, if you're going to compare stats, Jamie Foxx has got Grammys, same as he's got, I think he's got more than Donald Glover. And then he's got an Oscar. Yeah. Donald Glover's got an Emmy, though. Got a few of them. I'm sure Jamie Foxx does too, right? A Golden what? Globes and all that other shit. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, look, it's close. I, I, I would still take Jamie Foxx. It's like the washing your legs debate. What? Do you wash your legs in the shower? I'm sorry? <laughs> yes, I wash my fucking legs. Dude. Oh, okay. So do you some, not wash your legs? No, I do. But there was a lot of people that were like, no, I just let the water like. It was a it was a Twitter debate. Are for you a fucking very kidding me? Time. Yeah, that's disgusting. Do you guys wash your legs like wash? Alec. Yes. Yeah. With okay. The loofah? Jamie. Oh, and you, you Jamie. And you Jamie wash says he dates legs? black women and you, and you wash it you with wash a washcloth. You wash them all the way. The calves all the way down to the. OK. All right. I yeah I, I so I guess everyone here washes their legs, I, but it was I a do. fifty fifty. God, that's like disgusting. you're there's two types. If of I people found that out about you, I would that be you didn't roast out. Wash your legs. Yes. I mean, wash dish, bish. I mean, you've got to. It sort of like says a lot about you. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and you you're kind a of, lazy, you find dirty out, motherfucker. You find out other things like people were talking about it, like. Yeah, I sit in the shower, so obviously I... And you're like, you sit in the shower? Like, that's how you shower? Do you know well, what I mean? So it's like, it's a revealing. Yeah, okay. So it was, since we're going down this road today, sitting in the shower is one of my favorite things. However, you need I a, can't even imagine you doing that. Here's the thing. You need a either one of those ledges, you know? One of those... A bath? No, not a bath. You know, in, in those sta- in, in, in showers where oh, sometimes no, no, no. there's a so bench I'm built in. Sit on the floor. No, I okay. do not sit on the fucking floor. However, by the drain, like drain nope. balls on the drain. No, that is that is very uh, leaving Las Vegas. Yeah, like Elizabeth yeah, Shue. yeah. Crying game. You know, there's yeah. certain times when yep. you know sitting in the shower yeah. is warranted. Yeah. Uh, that's no. Yeah. Unless something happens to me, if I'm a rape victim, then yeah, I'll sit down in the shower. Mm-hmm. Other than that, no, I need a bench. I enjoy sitting on a bench in a shower. Like if it's, if it's there, you know, mm-hmm. and you just sort of what? Sit just, there I put the water and... on my head. Yeah. And just kind of put my hands down and uh-huh. it's like a nice cleansing thing. I also enjoy a nice sauna. There you Love go. Love to get one of those one mm-hmm. day back mm-hmm. in the old house. Um, and but then, yeah, it opened up a pretty big debate. In college, Leg washing. we used to, we had these power showers that were like, still the greatest shower I've ever had in my entire life. Mm-hmm. It was a bunch mm-hmm. of dudes, no curtains, no nothing, right? Three powerful showers. I mean, that's the strongest like water you, pressure. Hurt you shower. I've ever, not, not hurt you, but it, like enough where you're like, oh man, if you're hungover, it would shake the hangover off you, you know? Right. Uh, if you were dirty. You know, it would definitely been in like a hurdy shower. Oh, like, yeah. We're you know, when there's like a small, hard spray. Yep. So it feels like needles are hitting you going through your dick and balls. Yeah, I hate it. So I hate that. But uh, anyways, I would we would take chairs in there like f- like from the dinner table mm-hmm. downstairs. These plastic chairs um, that were down in the. Uh, like the main I kitchen area. Yeah, I get it. Put them up chairs. there. Mm-hmm. Beers in the shower hung over as shit. I think the record was 110, an hour 10. That you sat in the we shower. We sat in the shower and just, uh, we had a. All of your dicks and balls are out. Yeah, everything. Never. Three a dudes. A wide it gate. Was, yeah. Oh, wide super, sitting. super wide gate. Because mm-hmm. you got to get that water, that water flow in there. And uh, there was bongs. Like we had pledges bring in bongs. Because, uh, I mean, at this point, there was sh- not only shower beers. That turned into a shower 12 pack. And then we made somebody remember that TV I was telling you about that yeah, on yeah. wheels. We had somebody wheel in the the there TV because there was a a wide open stall, so we could just we I, we had a game on. We had a full football game on in there. NFL. It was about one thirty in the afternoon on a Sunday. My favorite thing is to just have a glass of milk in the shower. You know, <laughs> vacation. I call it vacation milk, right? Because you know you only do it on vacation, bringing it in. <laughs> But just a hot, hot shower and a cup. Plastic. A cup plastic cup of, of milk. milk. Yeah. 
and you kind of just find where you know wherever you can set it right and then drinking it in the shower gosh because then it's like it doesn't matter if you spill a little bit right you're on vacation god damn it the that would milk be will just wash right off that would be absolutely fucking disgusting um, but yeah i've washed my legs i think there was probably more guys than girls that didn't the water just yeah, you're one hoping the soap the, just travels. One of them was the founder of Gimlet. Founder of Gimlet Media does not wash his legs. And, he and lets they, and the they water. Paid that, Spotify paid that motherfucker $250 million and doesn't wash his doesn't legs. Doesn't wash his legs. He just lets the soap from the, from the rest of his body trickle down to his legs. And he says that gets them clean enough. Spotify, get your shit together, man. There's no fucking way. Here That's, you have Spotify, paying, you have a whole studio of people that wash their legs. Yeah. And you're paying that guy two hundred and fifty million dollars? That dirty million, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh that's that makes me sick. Yeah. That makes me sick. It should. It should make you sick. Um something else that, that makes me sick. I want to talk about this. I didn't know this was still a thing, but I'm kind of pleased that it is. Squatters. Squatters are still a thing. Mm -hmm. Um where you just roll into somebody's empty house and then just fucking live there? Yeah. I, I was unaware of this. Now, I've heard about it where you're renting and then you decide to stop paying rent and then, and you your know. And squatter's rights. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, you go through the eviction. You can live mm -hmm. there for, you know, an extra six months or whatever yeah. the fuck it is. We've heard some horror stories. Mm -hmm. um, fuck, man. I, there was even one of my buddies who ran a bunch of those duplexes and shit. I'm not going to say which city. But uh, the people were squatting in there, and he had to pay because the police and the city won't do anything about it. So he paid some armed guards to come in there and rip these motherfuckers out of the house in the middle of the night. Like, yeah, it's gnarly. Yeah, uh, two instances today where squatters got popped. George Michael's house, which uh, is still there. Okay. Yeah, because his ex boyfriend was living in there. Okay. And. Uh, he was squatting in there, and they told him to leave, and then he ended up smashing up the mansion. Okay. So that's a thing still. Why How, did he have to leave? George Michael's been dead for a year. I know, but... More okay. than a year was and a like half, probably. to get something in the... Had they been together for a long time? Anyway. Yeah, I, I, who knows? It's like Versace he said he, he said he... Yes, exactly. He said he has. The family said he hadn't. Mm -hmm. Who really knows the fucking answer behind that? Um, but I think he died on Christmas a year and a half ago from, cause remember that Christmas song? Everybody tied him to that Christmas song. Last Christmas, mm -hmm. I gave you my house. And they were like, oh, how fitting that he died on Christmas for that <laughs> song. And it was just like, dude, he did a thousand songs. You could relate it to any song if you wanted to. Shit. You could have said the person who found him walked into wake, wake, wake me up before you go, go. You know? Yeah. Didn't do Didn't that. Didn't he do, um, do they know it's Christmas too? No. No, that's uh, you too. Come on, Jays. We did that on this show. Uh, he, the no, 2016. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A year and a half ago. Oh, shit. No, that was three years ago. Mm -hmm. Two and a half years ago. So He's Christmas of 2016. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at two and a half years. Holy shit. It's a long time, man, to live in that house. I wonder if they said, hey, man, you can have it, this house for a little bit or whatever. But you've got to get out eventually. I mean, who fucking knows, dude? But that's, that's pretty gnarly, dude. What did they end up doing with Ver Versace's lover? Because they never really told you that endgame story they on that really show. They didn't really tell you that. On, uh, um, what was it, American Crime Story? Yeah, but I think he got nothing, right? I mean. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, you would want to hope not after that, but who knows? Um, the other one was Channing Tatum. What happened? They arrested a girl at his place for, she's been sleeping there for the, like the last, living there for like the last 10 days, whatever. There's a, here's, the, here's what I find odd about this, okay? Yeah. He, they got her out of there. Somebody made a, a citizen's arrest. Mm -hmm. Got her out of there, called the police, whatever. Uh, she got a restraining order for like 500 yards and that was it for five years. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was some admission that he knew her or knew of her in the past. Okay. They're not saying how, why, what I have no idea, but 
this girl's clearly off the reservation. She said, we were still communicating. We always have been communicating, but through song. So through music, they oh, were communicating. Okay, 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 um, okay, okay. Now, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Now, was it somebody that he dated after Homegirl? And then she lost her shit and then, you know, said, I'm going to go live in your house and lost her mind. They got arrested and she's I'm communicating. I've been communicating with him through music and yeah, he just doesn't know it. That was a whoopsie. That was a whoopsie. And you never really know. No. Which direction that crazy is going to go, right? No, you don't. You don't. You really hope, you know, you do get the, the crazy eyes, you get the vibe, and you go, okay, well, this is going to be fun for tonight. Yep. But you never know how, yeah. how that's going to translate later. You hope that they're just like crazy, bye-bye crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but sometimes they squat in your house and tell you that they <laughs> are communicating with you through song. So you have to really uh, try and read the room on those, on those things. Yeah, right? yep, yep, yep. And really risk versus re reward for that one night. Truth. Couple nights. Yeah, hot girl okay. summer. Yeah, I think that's what she said when she got arrested. Hot girl hot summer. Hot girl summer. Yep. And they were like, "Well, you're right. I mean, you are doing whatever the <laughs> fuck you want, right? You're getting what you want out of life. Yeah. You don't care what anyone thinks. You're living your truth, getting hot, that paper. Hot girl summer. Hot girl summer, Jesse. That's that's what we're into. That's right. That's what we're into. Um, and with the, by the way, with the, the Mueller report being a complete bust. Mm -hmm. Mueller times, Mueller time. Right. Um, the news is quickly trying to fill up what they thought was going to be the most exciting day of their life. Um, they're having a real hard time with that. Sure. Uh, the, the Associated Press, one of their top stories right now is uh, fat cats. Literally, new study finds felines are getting chubbier. That's where we've gone. That's where we've gone to. I, look, I've said this a million times on this show. I'll say it a million more times again. Once this shit is over, the news has nowhere to go anymore. They have no... Are you saying we don't have to worry about fat cats? Because that could be dangerous as well. <laughs> so what are you saying? Don't, don't, I'm don't saying, look I'm, into it. I'm not, no, let's not look into that. I don't need those studies. What <sighs> are you worried hate about? to have a bunch of fat. <laughs> bigger cats than there already are <laughs> around and i think we need to really no am i okay yeah no i think i think we're all good on on you know okay. the, if we, if we can do weight studies on cats um we should probably be focusing that more on humans well, it's just you know the stuff that that's in that cat the cat food these days it's like we really need to have more education <laughs> as far as what, you know what I mean? Because now it's like it's very mass produced. You know, back in the day, these cats were eating, you know, chicken, fish. Yeah, right, right? out of the sea. They were right putting their paws the right out of the sea. Right Tuna in the sea. right out of the can. And yeah. now, you know, it's just so much easier to drive through and grab the <laughs> fancy feast. You know, have you looked at the ingredients? <laughs> Pretty bad. And I do, you know. If this is our next uh, thing, our next crusade. Yeah, man. Mich Michelle Obama maybe wants to get on this and we can really make some change. Because yeah. it starts with the kitties. It, no, you know it always I mean? does. It always it does. It starts with the young, mm. young cats. Mm -hmm. And you really need to get their diet under control. I'm bored of this conversation. Already. Jesse, you are the one that is continuing I it. I know, and now I'm, now, now I'm done. You've already checked out of your own yeah. conversation, which is... Which is what I'm I love. I'm taking as far as it can go. No, but I look, the point is this. Since that thing was a complete and utter bust, now they're trying to fill up time for the rest of the day. Sure, I get it. And uh, also the, the new reports that, that uh, the ratings came out for MSNBC and CNN dropped another double-digit segment. Like As you start to get further and further away from this narrative, it's, you're going to get a lot of these fat cat stories with, with sure. cats getting chubbier. Uh, <laughs> I miss the days when we were actually talking about that kind of shit. Well, we're back in it now. Good. Thank you. <laughs> oh man, uh, whatever, whatever you're on today, I love it. What? I don't know, man. You were weird today, and I love it. Hot girl summer. Yeah. 
I've just decided I'm not going to like try and make everybody happy. You know, I'm not going to like care about what everyone thinks. I'm just going like, to do what I want to do. You know, you're right. The Megan, the yeah. stallion, like you're right. Girlfriend. Hot girl summer. Hot Dude. girl summer. Uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day. Shall we? We shall. Um, this one's going out to Rutger Hauer. Um, the actor. Uh, so last night we signed a deal with uh, Shutter, uh, Shutter dot com over on Drinking Bros podcast. Uh, they're going to be one of our sponsors uh, for the next couple months. And I was breezing through their catalog, and uh, it's all it's all horror films on there, right? Mm -hmm. And they're they're saying they're the Netflix for horror is is what they're they're going to be. And I was like, cool. Let me look at some of the movies you have and whatever. And I uh, I saw Hobo with a Shotgun on there. Oh, yeah. And that kind of made that genre fun and flirty again. It made, it made a lot of money. Uh, it enabled me to get some financing for FDR American Badass and all that stuff. And um, uh, it was solely, a, a lot of people say, because of Rutger Hauer um, playing that role of the hobo and how it was fucking hilarious and all that shit. The reason why he's the revolutionary figure of the day is he helped me get a lot of my shit made because of that performance. And he died this morning. Um, mm. So I uh, wanted to uh, say, you know, RIP, first of all. But for the weird movies I was making at that time with FDR American Badass and like Pool Boy Drowning Out the Fury and shit, like that movie and him in particular, that was instrumental in getting, help getting a lot of us weird filmmakers financing for our shit to say, hey man, you can put, it doesn't have to be a superstar in an independent film for it to make money. It's just you could you could make a cool concept and get a cooler actor. And uh, we had actually one of the first conversations <clears throat> for FDR American Badass was, and this was suggested by the financiers, was to reach out to Rucker Howard to play mm. FDR. And we did. The crazy thing was, is after Hobo and Shotgun, his quote was super high, and we couldn't yeah. we couldn't afford it. So the conversation kind of ended there with the agents and. Uh, uh, Bar Barry Boswick was pitched and we went back to the financiers and they said, based off of Hobo with a Shotgun and all that thing, we're like, yeah, we, we'll pay for that. We think that can work or whatever. And um, that's what got a few of those movies financed. So uh, shout out to him. He was only 75. Dang. So I don't, I, I don't know what happened. It's, it's breaking news right now. But um, fuck, man. It actually said he died July 19th in the Netherlands. I didn't know he lived in the Netherlands. No. Um, man, people are just finding out about that today. Hmm. Five days later. That one's kinda, that was, that's kind of surprising. This story li is, is breaking right now. And they only found out about it, they said, because uh, they held a funeral. They held a fu the funeral today. And that's how they found out about it. Weird. Yeah. Now that's under the radar. Shit, dude. I like it, though. Um. Yeah, I, 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 like, I like the fact what that, that he say? did it and, uh, and then he was able to just bounce, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, fuck, man. Make some cash and then pop on over to the Netherlands and live out your life. Right? Yeah. That's what we talk about all the time. I wonder what was going on over there for him, you know? Hey, you're hot in the, girl summer. I'm yeah, sure hot girl just, summer. He was doing whatever he wanted to do under the veil of the Netherlands. Yeah, it's one of those places you don't really no know about. No, you don't really think about. But anyways, what, what's the hot spot over there? What's the hot spot in the Netherlands? Nobody knows. No, right? Uh uh Amsterdam. Oh, it's Amsterdam over there. Fuck. Thanks, Jamie. Amsterdam's over there. I'm sure, I'm sure the entire audience at home is just like, it's fucking Amsterdam screaming at the radio. Yeah, that's why I don't like to get into this maybe kind we of have geography our, type stuff. The answer, yeah, of course. Sure. Of course. Maybe we have our answer. Uh, he was probably uh, on the... Uh, pretty legal over here, but yeah, no, I hear you. Well, no, but, you know, five oh, years heroin. ago... It, well, no, no, no. No. <laughs> no. So not heroin. Done. <laughs> not heroin. For what do you sure. mean? <laughs> not heroin. There's a lot of heroin out there. Amsterdam. Yeah. Uh, 
Is that prostitutes a- and heroin? Yeah, man. Really? If someone's fucking hole up in, the, in Amsterdam, you know exactly what they're doing. Well, if you're doing heroin, the housewives it- are going there for some weed cafes. But the real deal, motherfuckers, are going out there for heroin and prostitutes. It said uh, uh, it was a long illness, so he didn't OD on heroin. Um, <laughs> just wanna, really want to clarify that for the audience in case oh, you were like, yep, hey, man, yep, I was listening yep, to this yep, podcast. Yep, yep. Heroin. And, uh, Rutger Howard died of a heroin overdose. Yep. That would be sad, but you a know, sometimes, much. sometimes the limelight gets to you, man. You just need to check out and do some heroin and get some prostitutes. Yeah. And die. No, I understand that it was definitely not the situation here. So and it may have been, and we don't really know because we're just finding out. Nope. So it's like we're gonna wait until the facts come out. It says a long we're illness. Wait until people really tell us the real deal, because. Nah. You know, we don't know. We're waiting for the autopsy and toxicology reports. Nope. So uh, it said a long illness. Could have been heroin and yeah. lots of sex nope. that killed him. No, heroin. And uh, we're just waiting to see. So. Heroin and, 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 anyway, and lots so of we, sex is uh, not we a... We will keep you abreast of that and keep <laughs> you updated. And uh, no. we'll figure it out later. Nope. It's a long illness. We'll let, you know next, we'll let you know next show. Nothing of what she said is remotely true or uh, can be attributed as a fact. Um, of any sort. I uh, also want to give the audience a quick update on my uh, on the last show. Me wanting to go full Dr. King. Uh, the school board meeting found out it's not going to happen. And I'm a little disappointed in that. The school board meeting is not going to happen? No, it's on. We're, we're going to be on the Drinking Bros cruise. And uh, I'm going to miss my chance to stand up in front of the school board and have my moment. Yeah. My Field of Dreams moment. You know, yeah, no. remember the K- Kay Costa's wife, Kay Costner's wife in uh, oh, Field of Dreams? Yes. Stopping that whole place from getting those books taken away. Oh, my God. Yes. That's that's uh, that's how I would have been. I think parents would have looked up to me for years and years to come. Terrence Mann. Yeah. Children of all ages. Parents of, of all ages would have looked up to me from years and ye- like years to come and just said, oh, man, and I remember that, that speech you gave that yet. that night. And that was the day yeah. that our property values stayed the same. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you really saved a, a community. Yeah. Gave, from, I gave a community hope. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what I do in this world is I give people hope, Jabes. Yep. You've got a, a board that you just write on wash, dish, bish. Again, subscribe on YouTube. What's the end game with this? Because I see a, a it looks like a donut sticker, a taco sticker, and some form of pizza sticker on that board it makes sense so for everyone but you okay so sure. welcome welcome to the world is that what you're is it is it kind of like this is your restaurant and this is what you're serving nope i'm just gonna write whatever i want on there oh going forward yeah because hot girl summer yeah. so <laughs> i am gonna do whatever i want and i'm gonna like you know, has anyone killed a phrase in in under an hour? Because I think white people, hi, yeah, hot girl summer has been. Killed. Yeah, it was killed before this. That's why I'm talking about it. Once it gets to me, mm-hmm. white girl, mom, yeah, 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 it's been killed. Yeah, it's done, right? So, me keeping it going is is the funny part cool uh, then I'm and i don't g- want to explain comedy to you but i know obviously and I, I mean I, I hate to do that but. I, I, I appreciate <laughs> it i do that's uh that means a lot that but like, means a lot that's why it's funny sure sure um here's what else is funny is at the end of the show now that we're gonna wrap it up i'm gonna put work work it girl Put that at the end of the show. Jamie, don't put that at yep. the end. Yep, of- Jamie, we're putting that at the end of the show. RuPaul, work, and I believe the song is just called "Work," or is it called "Work It, Girl"? Do you know? Runway something. I, I don't. Whatever. Do your thing on the runway. Do your thing. I don't know. I don't know what on it the is. runway. Yeah, we're gonna stick it at the end of this for Jesse Wiseman, aka the Jables. I am Ross Patterson. This is the Revolution. Good night, everyone. We'll keep you updated on that heroin death. Nope, we will not. Good night. Not not a real thing. Work.